Today, I'm going to feel like talking to you about the top college student tax deductions and credits. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you doing today? <laughs> I hope you are doing superb. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. And if you are doing as terrific as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. I want to have a conversation about a very important topic. What are the top college student tax deductions and credits that can help you reduce your educational cost? We have done extensive research and we have 12 12 college student tax deductions and credits that will help you. Let's first get into it. But before we get into the, uh, the nitty gritty, let's first understand the distinction between deduction and credit. And we're putting right now on screen a little table that we've done for you. And basically a deduction will uh, reduce your tax liability dollar for dollar, whereas a deduction will increase your adjusted gross income. And if you look at uh, the table we have on the screen right now, you can see that a $10,000 tax deduction is advantages is not as uh, advantageous financially as a $10,000 tax credit. So with the credit, your tax bill is a 10 grand in our scenario, whereas with the uh, deduction, your tax bill is 18,000. All right. So number one, the 529 plans. And this is perhaps the best way for a parent to save for a child's college education is through a 529 savings plan. So from the time the child is born to the time he or she goes off to college, parents can be sucking away money in a 529 account for the child's education and letting the funds grow tax free for years. Now, grandparents and others can set up 529 accounts for the child too. That's fantastic, right? In addition, there is no tax on withdrawals used to use for qualified college expenses such as tuition, fees, room and board, books, computers, or internet access fees. That's wonderful. And up to 10,000 from a 529 account can also be used to pay down the child's student loan debt. And if your child ends up not going to college, tax-free rollovers to a 529 plan for another family member are allowed. Number two, the Coverdale Education Savings Account, the ESAs. Now, another way to save for college is through a Coverdale Education Savings Account. Like 529 plans, a, um, money deposited in a Coverdale ESA grows tax-free and there is no tax on distri distributions used for qualified college expenses. However, unlike 529 plans, the tax code places limits on who can contribute to a Coverdale ESA, how much can be deposited into the, the, this ESA each year, and how long you can contribute to a Coverdale ESA, and how long you can leave money in a Coverdale ESA. Number three, we have the American Opportunity Tax Credit. This is one of uh, two credits available to people who are taking college courses right now. However, it's only available for expenses incurred by students who are in the first four years of undergraduate study. So if, you, if you've already claimed this credit, say, f for more than four years, you are no longer eligible. This used to be called the, the HOPE credits. So the student must also attend college at least half time for an academic period that began in a tax year for which the credit is claimed and he or she must also be pursuing a program leading to a degree or other recognized education credential. Number four, the lifetime learning tax credit. And this is actually the second uh, tax credit for people currently enrolled in college. And uh, with this credit, you can claim 20% of the first $10,000 of out-of-pocket costs for college tuition, fees, and books for a total maximum credit of $2,000. So unlike the uh, the American Opportunity Credits, the Lifetime Learning Credit is not limited to undergraduate educational expenses, nor does the credit applies only to students attending at least half-time. 
and there is also um, no limit on the number of years the lifetime learning credit can be claimed for each student. And what we like with this credit is that you can claim it for yourself, your spouse, or your dependent for the uh, for up to two thousand dollars per family each year. All right. So the thing is that you will usually qualify for the benefits if uh, your modified adjusted adjusted gross income is no higher than one forty thousand. In two thousand twenty, it was uh, one thirty eight thousand for married couples filing jointly, or sixty nine thousand dollars for single filers. And it, and the numbers are one thirty six thousand and sixty eight thousand respectively for two thousand nineteen. And uh, one thing I want to say here is that generally the same types of education expenses that qualify or don't qualify for the American Opportunity Credit also qualify for the lifetime learning. However, you can also claim the lifetime learning expenses for classes taken to acquire or improve job skills. And uh, the same rules that prevent duplicate tasks tax benefits with regards to the American Opportunity Credit also apply for purposes of the lifetime learning credit. So one thing I also want to say here before closing on this section is that the lifetime learning credit is not refundable. As a result, it can reduce your taxes to zero. But the thing here is that the excess will not be refunded to you if the credit is more than your tax. I want to talk to you now about tuition and fees deduction. So the, um, the American Opportunity and Lifetime Learning Credits are usually the best tax breaks to help pay for current college expenses. However, if you don't qualify for those credits, guess what? You must still be able to claim a tax deduction for college tuition and fees for yourself, your spouse, or your dependents. And, and this deduction is uh, an above-the-line deduction, which means that you, will, you don't have to itemize to claim it. In addition to tuition, the deduction covers student fees and expenses for course-related books, supplies, and equipment if they are required to enroll or attend a class. So insurance, medical expenses, room and board transportations, and similar personal living or family expenses are not deductible even if they're mandatory for enrollment or attendance. Number six, scholarships, fellowships, and other assistance. One thing I want you have to remember here is that many types of educational assistance are tax-free if they meet certain requirements. For instance, a scholarship or a fellowship grant is excluded from taxable income if you are a degree candidate at an uh, eligible educational institution, including Pell Grants and other need-based educational grants. The money must also be used for tuition or fees required for enrollment or attendance or for books supplies, equipment, or other expenses that are required for a class. It cannot, that money cannot exceed your educational expenses, be designated or earmarked for non-educational purposes, for example, travel or room or board, and, uh, and or represent payment for teaching, research, or other services required as a condition for receiving the financial assistance. And one thing that you have, you have to be, uh, you have to think about here is that if you receive a tuition reduction for undergraduate courses, it's tax-free only if you are an employee of the college, a former employee of the college who retired or left on disability, if you are a widow or a widower of someone who died while an employee of the college or who retired or left on disability, or you are the dependent child or, or spouse of someone described earlier. For graduate courses, a tuition reduction is tax-free only for students who perform teaching or research activities for the college or university. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are also having a conversation today about the top 12 college students' tax deductions and credits. And uh, number seven, employer-provided educational assistance. So uh, workers who receive educational assistance, for example, they will benefit from, um, if they receive this kind of, uh, this educational assistance benefit from their employer, they can exclude up to 5,250 of those benefits from their taxable income 
each year. That's $5,250. So the benefits must be paid under a written educational assistance program. So one thing that's very important to remember is that an, assist, an employee cannot use any of the tax-free education expense paid by their employer as the basis for any other deduction or credit, including the American Opportunity Credit and Lifetime Learning Credit. So tax-free educational assistance benefits includes payments for tuition, fees, books, supplies, and equipment. So the payments, though, don't have to be for work-related courses or courses that are a part of a, of a degree program. Payment for the following are not tax exempt. Meals, lodging or transportation, tools or supplies other than textbooks that you can keep, and courses inv involving sports, games, or hobbies unless they have a reasonable relationship to the employer's business or are required as part of a degree program. Let's talk about the deduction for self-employed persons work-related education. So self-employed people generally can deduct the cost of work-related education as a business expense. So this will reduce the amount of income subject to both the federal income tax and self-employed self-employment tax, right? The education must be required to either keep your present salary, status, or job, or maintain or improve skills needed in your present work. This is kind of a very, very important, folks. Now, let me just kind of say this here. No deduction is allowed if the education is needed to meet the minimum educational requirements of your present trade or business or part of a program that will qualify you for a new trade or business. So if the education meets the requirements that I just mentioned, the following expenses can be deducted. So things like tuition, books, supplies, lab fees, and similar items, certain transportation and travel costs, and other education expenses such as cost of research and tapping when writing a paper as part of, a, uh, of an educational program. You have, to re you have to remember, folks, that you can never deduct personal or capital expenses. Number nine, we have the early distributions from IRAs. So as the name implies, individual retirement accounts, IRAs, are meant to be used in what? Retirements, right? That's why you generally have to pay a 10% tax if you take money out of your out of an IRA before you reach age 59 and a half in addition to income taxes on the amount withdrawn. However, you can withdraw funds from an IRA to pay for qualified higher education expenses without having to pay the 10% additional tax, although you may still owe income tax on all or some of the amount distributed. This is something you have to be aware of. For the 10% penalty to be waived, the education expenses must be for yourself, your spouse, your or your spouse's child, foster child or adopted child, or your or your spouse's grandchild. And so the, the allowable expenses include things like tuition, fees, books, supplies, and equipment required for enrollment or attendance at, at a, an eligible educational institution. Number 10, we have the Education Savings Bond Program. So if you have, um, let's say you have an, an old savings bond that your grandmother or grandfather gave you when you were a child, if so, you might be able to cash them in without paying taxes on the interest earned if you use the proceeds to pay qualified education expenses for yourself, your spouse, or a dependent. So the, saving, the savings bonds must be Series EE bonds issued after 1989 or Series I bonds. They also have to be issued either in your name as the sole owner or in the name of both you and your spouse as co-owners. In, in addition, and this is very important, folks. The owner must be at least 24 years old before the bond's issue date, which is printed on the front of the bond. Tax-free treatment is available if the savings bond money is used for tuition and fees required for college enrollment or attendance contributions to a 529 plan or contributions to a Coverdale ESA. It cannot be used for room or board or for courses involving sports, games or hobbies that are not part of a degree or certificate granting program another thing another thing you need to remember here folks is that if you are married and filing a joint return the the ability to claim this tax break on 2020 returns starts to phase out when adjusted gross income exceeds one twenty three thousand dollars and five hundred fifty one twenty three thousand five hundred and fifty dollars 
and this is completely phased out after 153 550. So for singles and heads of households, the 2020 phase out zone starts at 82,350 and is uh, ending after 97,350. I also want to talk to you about the student loan interest deduction. This is uh, number one of the top college student tax deductions and credits. So when your college days are over, and uh, your diploma is in hand, you might have a new financial hardship to worry about, right? <laughs> we all do. Student loan debt. So if so, the tax code provides a few ways to lessen this heavy financial burden. And um, most of the time, personal interest you pay is not deductible on your tax return. However, you may be allowed a special deduction for paying interest on the student loan used for higher education. And this is uh, the student loan uh, interest deduction is claimed as an adjustment to income so you can claim it on your tax return even if you don't itemize it. You can only deduct up to $2,500 of student loan interest paid each year though. However, that amount is gradually reduced to zero if your modified AGI, your adjusted gross income, is between $70,000 and $85,000 and $140,000 to $170,000 for joint filers. So the loan must be taken out solely to pay qualified education expenses for you, your spouse, or a person who was your dependent when you took out the loan. So qualified, qualified expenses include amounts paid for tuition and fees, right, room and board, books, supplies and equipment, and other necessary expenses such as transportation. And uh, you know, the, as long as you are no longer claimed as a dependent, you can deduct up to $2,500 of student loan interest paid by mom and dad each year. Number 12, last but not the least, student loan cancellation and repayment assistance. So what if, let me give you a scenario here. What if your student loan is canceled or repaid by someone else? For most loans, any debt that is canceled or paid on your behalf must be included in your taxable income. With student loans, however, you may, you may be able to avoid tax on the canceled or repaid debt. In the case of canceled student loan debt, the cancellation must be due to death or total and permanent disability or pursuant to a loan provision stating that all or part of the debt will be canceled if you work for a certain period of time in a certain profession or for a certain employer. You will not qualify for tax-free treatment if your loan is canceled because of services you performed for the educational institution that made the loan or other organization that provided the funds. So it, this is kind of tricky. This is very important. So when it comes to student loan repayment assistance, taxation of the payment depends on who is making the payments. The payments will be tax-free for you if they are made by the National Health Service Corp Loan Repayment Program, a state education loan repayment program eligible for funds under the Public Health Services Act, or any other state's loan repayment, repayment or a loan forgiveness program that is intended to provide for the increased availability of health services in underserved or health professional shortage areas. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another uh, edition, another section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation today about the, the top 12 tax deductions and credits for college students. So let me let me share with you um, other relevant info. Qualified expenses for student tax deductions and credits for the tax year 2020. Right now on the screen, I'm showing you right now the qualified expenses for student tax deductions and credits for 2020. And you can see that basically you have to, uh, tuition and fees, books and supplies, computers and related equipment and services, for example, internet, room and board, transportation costs, health insurance, and student loan interest payments. So here you can see those that are deductible and those that are not. And how do you claim education deductions and credits on uh, when you actually um, e-file. During the tax interview questions after you have indicated that you have um, education expenses, on the education screen there are a series of questions you'll be asked. 
So after you have, after you provide the, the answers and information, the tax app will highlight to you which education deduction or credit is best for you and uh, that you qualify for, whether it is tuition and fees deduction, American Opportunity Credit, or Lifetime Learning Credit. And if you have a student loan interest to claim, you can provide that info on uh, the student loan adjustment form. The great thing here is that you can actually uh, use any app from efile.com to uh, TurboTax to, to h and Block to TaxLayer to uh, Tax Act. You can claim it there. How else can students save money on taxes? Now, besides claiming tax credits, which reduce the amount of income tax you, you owe, and tax deduction, which reduce the amount of uh, your income tax that is taxable, the amount of tax, the amount of income rather, that is taxable, there are two other major ways students can save money on taxes. Two or three. So you have exclusions, saving, savings plans, and financial aid. So. Tax exclusions are parts of your income that do not have to be included in your gross income on your tax return. So the most relevant forms of non-taxable income for students are scholarship funds and fellowship grants. Saving, savings plans. There are two special kinds of savings and I spoke to us. I just talked about them today. And uh, those two kinds of savings accounts provide great tax benefit to students. So the Coverdale, the Coverdale um, educational educational savings accounts and the qualified tuition programs which are also known as the 529 college savings plans and then uh, when you when applying for financial aid your college or university may ask you to provide your old tax returns either yours or your parents so to access an old tax return you might have to obtain a copy or a free transcript of a tax return from the IRS because a transcript of your tax return provides W-2 information along with the basic information uh, that was filed with the tax return. All right, folks, this is it for today's conversation. I really appreciate your help. Thank you so much for your attention. I was talking to you about the 12, the top 12 deductions and credits for college students. So uh, here they are. Here's a recap here. We have 529 planes. Coverdale Education Education Savings Account, the, Ameri the American Opportunity Tax Credit, the Lifetime Learning Tax Credit, Tuition and Fees Deduction, Scholarships, Fellowships, and Other Assistance, Employer Provided Educational Assistance, Deduction for Self-Employed Persons Work-Related -rela Education, Early Distributions from IRAs, Education Savings Bond Program, Student Loan Interest Deduction, and the student loan cancellation and repayment assistance. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I will speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.